So today we're going to be talking about grease guns and grease. So maybe you just bought that tractor, that compact tractor you always wanted, or you got a riding lawnmower and ATV. And now you need to grease it. So maybe you never greased anything before in your life. And when you go to the store, it can be very intimidating when you see all the different kinds of grease guns and all the different kinds of grease. What do you buy? What do you have to look for? And what is going to be the best grease gun and grease for your situation? Well, today that's what we're going to go through. And in this video, we're going to look at grease guns specifically because there's a lot of different options. So in the second segment of this video, we'll talk about grease. So when you walk in, you're going to see a lot of different grease guns. There's going to be pistol grip grease guns. There's going to be lever handle grease guns. There's going to be electric grease guns. There might be pneumatic or air grease guns. And it can leave you thinking, well, what do I need? Well, maybe electric, you know, that, that looks nice, it looks easy, or maybe I want a lever handle grease gun or a pistol grip grease gun. Which one is really right for your situation? So today, we're going to go through all those and hopefully narrow it down to the right grease gun for the right situation. Okay, so when we start looking at grease guns, right when you come down on the diagram, you're going to see a split between two different styles. You're going to see the old standard style, which is the grease gun your dad had, his dad had, and his grandpa's dad had. So it's probably the one you're familiar with. It's very simple. You're going to have to pull back this plunger every time you want to change a tube. You're going to have to unscrew this, um, this outer, outer tube here to get at the reusable cartridge inside. And then you're going to pull that old tube out, put a new one in, untake the cover, and then you screw the, the main container back in, release the spring, and you'll be ready to grease. You might have to fight a little bit with an air bubble in the top, but you have a bleeder valve on top of the grease gun as well to assist with that. So that's the standard grease gun we're all familiar with. That's the one you're going to run into when you go to the store. Um, although, you might run into this other style of grease gun now as well. It's called Lube Shuttle. It's been around for about a decade, and it's very simple. Um, to change a tube in this guy, all you're going to do is push up on the bottom. You get like a quarter inch of grease sticking out the top. It's a sealed cartridge. So all you do is just thread it back in. It's sealed on the back end with a, a follower plate, and then you just start greasing. Um, so that's the main two versions that we're going to start with. That's going to put you into a standard style of grease gun or a lube shuttle style of grease gun. Um, so let's talk about the advantages of a standard grease gun. They're very easy to find. They are at almost every gas station, every hardware store, every home and, and farm store that you you walk into. There's going to be a lot of different brands made in a bunch of different countries and there's going to be a wide price gap. So you could buy a very cheap one of these for 10, 11, 12, 15 bucks. You're going to be able to find grease in an old style cartridge. And that's the, the paper or plastic cartridge that has covers on both ends that you're going to take off. Um, most of the major brands make those cartridges, they're readily available. The disadvantages, these are very messy. They leak grease out the back if you got them hanging on the wall. You got to fight with that air gap. Changing a tube gets very messy. And you can end up with a lot of wasted grease. Um, so the advantages to this style of system, very easy to change it to. They don't leak grease because of the, the way it's designed. You don't have to fight with an air gap. Um, in terms of cost, they are more expensive. Um, all the loop shuttle guns are made in Germany. So you're going to be running into them around 50 on the low end up to 65 on the higher end, depending on which kind of options it would come with. The advantages, again, very easy to change, no mess, no leaking grease. Disadvantages, there's only about a half dozen to maybe eight at the most companies right now in the U.S. that are filling this style of tube. So they're a little bit harder to find. They're easy online. Um, they're all over, and a lot of the big box chains are going to be carrying them. Um, but those are two advantages, disadvantages right off the gate when we start looking at grease guns between a standard gun and a loop shuttle gun. So now you'll notice in front of me, um, they're all lever handle grease guns. We just got some different options on them. So the lever handle gun, this is probably the most common design and the most popular style of grease gun 
10, 15, 20 or more years ago. Um, they're easy to make, they're easy on your body. The problem is you need three hands to use this if you don't have a rigid two. And with a rigid two, this, this part here, you can't always get in where you need to get to grease the zerk fitting. So if the machine has all the zerk fittings out in the open, yeah, this is very easy to use. But if you're trying to, say on a compact tractor, grease uh, a drive shaft, or some of the suspension points, or some of the steering column points, a flexible tube is going to, or a flexible hose, is going to make it easier to get in and sometimes make it possible at all to get to those zerk fittings. Um, the advantage of this, it's not going to wear you out. Um, a lot of these style grease guns still go into construction companies or maintenance uh, companies where they're doing a ton of greasing every day. And if you had a hand grease gun uh, that you pump with one hand, a pistol grip style, your hand would get very sore and you wouldn't be able to, to continue greasing. So this is very easy. You just work this back and forth. It's not straining your body whatsoever. You can use your shoulder muscles, arm muscles. Makes it pretty easy to grease. Um, it's also a great option if you have uh, you know, arthritis or maybe some you know, trouble working a, a pistol grip grease gun. This is very easy on the body. So maybe if you're getting up there in age and you might struggle to, to pull and compress that, that one hand grease gun, this is a great option. Um, so you can look at different options within this grease gun. One of them is going to be a flexible hose. Um, this is good. If you've got, a, if you got a, a, a strong four jaw coupler or a locking coupler on the end of this, it makes it pretty ideal. You can lock onto the zerk fitting. You can reach up to different zerk fittings that might normally be out of reach of a rigid tube like this. Um, <clears throat> on truck components, if you got in, get in to grease your suspension, you can get that hose in or around. Or maybe you're laying on the ground, you can reach up and clip that on there. Um, this really becomes functional when you have a locking coupler um, because as it is like this, um, you almost need three hands to run it or you got to pinch the grease gun someplace so you can work the handle while you hold the coupler on the zerk fitting. So what makes that really accessible is a locking coupler. So a locking coupler like this, this is Safe Lock by um, Mato. It's going to lock onto a zerk fitting. So in a case like this long flexible tube hose, you could clip that onto the zerk fitting work the grease gun and pull the, the coupler back off. These unlock under pressure, they're pretty handy. Um, where you're going to get into a little bit of a headache with a locking coupler, either one like this, which is the same as a standard coupler, or some companies make them that are longer. Um, you can't reach into a zerk fitting sometimes because the lever is too big or the handle um, that you have to depress is a little bit too big to get in some of these tight areas. And as you make this longer, so you can reach in further, what you end up having is a non-flexible piece of steel that might be six, eight inches long, and then you can't make a corner. Um, so these are really handy on compact tractors, lawnmowers, different things like that, where you have a lot of zerk fittings that are out in the open. It makes it very easy to just clean, cleanly clip onto a zerk fitting. It locks on there tight. It's going to save some of that mess around the zerk fitting in the coupler, and it makes a lever handle grease gun a lot more functional because you have a free hand, so to say, to operate this grease gun. <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about pistol grip, or they call them one hand grease guns, because it literally takes one hand to run this grease gun. And it's handy to have that free hand to hold on the coupler onto the zerg fitting. So, this style of grease gun is very easy to use, especially if you have a minimal amount of greasing or just um, periodic greasing to do on your machine. So like a compact tractor, a mower, an ATV, something like that. This is going to be ideal. So you go to your tractor, you push on the zerg fitting, and you just start compressing that handle. It's very easy. You pull it off, you go to the next one. You don't have the mess of kind of running that big lever grease gun. This is very simple to use. If you got to get in someplace, it's very nice and light. Um, the disadvantage here is sometimes these handles are a little bit hard to depress. And if you've got a zerk fitting that's partially plugged or if you're pushing grease, 
into a big pin or a bushing that's got some resistance, you know, it's going to take some real hand strength um, to, to get that grease to go in there. But this is really ideal for compact tractors, lawnmowers, and different things like that, where you're only going to have periodic greasing to do. So in that case, it makes a lot of sense. When you start having to do more than one tube, it's going to be difficult because, again, if you're greasing an excavator that takes three tubes of grease every day, your hand is either going to get wore out or your one arm is going to be huge from pumping all those tubes of grease through this grease gun. Um, so that would be the one disadvantage of them. These come again with a flexible hose or a, a rigid tube or a rigid hose. I recommend just going with a flexible hose. It's going to save you a lot of headache in trying to work that grease gun around to get out of dirt fitting. This you can just kind of set it wherever. If you're, you know, like greasing suspension points on your truck, you can have this grease gun laying on your chest and you can reach up with your hose, maybe get a longer hose than this. This is 22 inches, it's a pretty good length. You can reach up and you can have this laying down here or over there and you can just work this grease gun with one hand. Um, so that makes it pretty convenient from that standpoint. And again, you can, you can use a blocking coupler with these as well. If you just kind of want to make it cleaner overall and you want that coupler to lock onto that zerg fitting so you don't have any grease leaking out around that zerg fitting, a locking coupler can make this cleaner still. It's a pretty pre, uh, clean system and you already have the one free hand. Um, <clears throat> so the locking coupler can be a big advantage, but it's not as big of an advantage as it would be on a lever handled grease gun where you're coming into the game a hand short. So now we get into electric grease guns. And they're very common, they're very popular, mainly because they take a lot of the work out of greasing. So if you have a lot of greasing to do, um, a grease gun like this will pump six tubes without a battery charge pretty easy. So it takes the work out of it. All you need to do to grease is you put your tube in, maybe it's a standard electric grease gun with that plunger or it's a loop shuttle style grease gun, we just thread in that tube and you just pull that trigger and you're off and greasing. Um, if you're going to get an electric grease gun, recommendation would be that you get a long enough hose so that when you're greasing something you can be reaching up and around or down and around um, to get at those zerk fittings. These are a little bit bigger, they're going to be a little bit clumsier. Um, but you can set them down and grease. You can, you know, they're very versatile, and you're you're not required to do any manual labor really, um, other than moving from one zerk to the next. So a good one. They're going to be very expensive. Um, you might be over three hundred dollars for a very good electric grease gun. Some of the the more popular brands um, that might be made overseas, you'd be looking at maybe. 150 up to 250 dollars. They're going to be expensive. They make sense if you do a lot of greasing, or maybe if you just really want that ease and convenience of just having to pull that trigger when you want to grease. Um, but a lot of construction companies, a lot of guys that do a lot of greasing, this is what they're going to be using, and they can put up quite a bit of pressure. You're looking around seven to twelve thousand psi, um, which is great if you got a, a grease around some big pins and bushings. They require a little extra force to get that grease in and around that, that pin. So that's a great option um, if you don't mind spending a little extra money and you have a lot of greasing to do, or if you just want something that's easy and clean to grease with. So the, the last grease gun we're going to look at today is a pneumatic grease gun. So this is going to plug into an airline. And this makes sense in a big shop where you've got airlines running all over and you do a lot of greasing in a day. So all you're going to do when you couple onto that Zerk fitting, you just pull that trigger and it's going to grease and it makes it very simple. Um, doesn't always make the most sense if you don't do a lot of greasing. Um, just because you got this hose that you have to go around with and sometimes it's just like having a cord that can get stuck under a tire or it's in a knot or whatever. So that can make it a little bit more difficult, um, but in a big garage where they're doing a lot of greasing every day, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and you can even have an inline greaser, so this, this hose might be filled with grease coming from a drum. Um, in this case, we're using a, a loop fiddle cartridge in here, and then it's just running off an airline. 
but uh, you might have a grease line going right to the grease gun, so you don't have to change a tube or anything. There's a couple different styles of these pneumatic grease guns. They're going to be kind of intermediary when it comes to price and pressure. About six, seven thousand psi is what you're going to get out of a pneumatic grease gun. Pricing is going to be 150, maybe 200 dollars up at the top end. Um, it's going to be very easy to use on your body again because it's all being done pneumatically. You don't have to do anything physically uh, with the grease gun when you want to grease. So that makes it simple. This hose on this one is a little bit short. In my opinion, it's maybe 14, 15 inches long. Um, so you really got to get that grease gun close to the zerk fitting. So again, that's something I would look at. Try to aim for a 22 inch hose or a 20 inch hose. That usually gives you enough length to get around, get to that zerk fitting without having to physically crawl in by that zerk fitting. Um, but that's another option if you got air and uh, you know if you do a lot of greasing or you're just looking for an option where you don't have to either squeeze a, a trigger or you know depress that lever handle. So that's another option for you. So as just kind of a quick review, you know you've got loop shuttle style grease guns with a thread in, thread out cartridge, or you have st uh, standard grease guns with a pullback plunger and an open-ended cartridge. Those are your two main differences. Within each of those categories, you're going to have pistol grip and lever handle grease guns. Um, lever handle grease gun is going to put out a lot more pressure than a pistol grip grease gun. Pistol grip grease gun is easier to use. Um, just because you have two hands, this one sometimes you might need a third hand in some cases or a locking coupler if you got a flexible hose. Um, you're going to have electric grease guns in both standard and loop shell styles and they're going to make greasing very easy. If you have a lot of greasing to do, you just pull that trigger. Um, one disadvantage there would be that you can over grease, which is a topic for another day, um, but that can happen or tends to happen with, with electric grease guns more so than a hand grease gun. And then you've got pneumatic or air-driven grease guns like this one um, that are going to be kind of mid-range price. They're great if you've got a lot of greasing to do, um, but then again you've got that, that air hose or that grease line going to it. So you might be taking away some of the advantage um, compared to an electric grease gun where you're going to be cordless or hoseless. Um, but if you've got a lot of greasing to do in a big shop, that can be a big advantage as well. So if you have any questions, please let us know. We're always looking to do follow-up videos on what you guys want to know about. So just leave a comment and we'll uh, answer the comment or maybe we'll do a video on it. So thanks for tuning in.